I get the sense that don't blink was your biggest risk so far. Yes, don't blink was a huge risk in the sense that um, it was my first movie that I produced. So I was convincing people that I should do it and that they should give me their money and trust me with their money and go finish a movie and give them a finished product and I would not drop the ball and I mean I didn't go to film school I didn't have anybody give me a booklet I couldn't like oh wait what's the answer to that problem oh it's right there is it that's awesome thanks guys we do the thing and so it's over there I had no fucking idea and you know it's always funny when you look back on your life and you realize how stupid you were and how full of crap you were, but you're like, we can do it. And I, so yeah, it was a huge risk for the investors and um, a huge risk for me because I was not willing to stop there. I mean, there were so many times when there were issues and frustrations and problems uh, that you wanted to be like, oh, oh my God, I can't do this anymore. This is insane. Because on a film budget like that, I, I paid myself like, 10 grand to produce and act in the thing. And it took many years to get this done. So I know people who wash dishes who make more money. Um, good people, good friends. But yeah, they're, they're making bank compared to me. I get made fun of by bus boys is what I'm saying. So there's a point where you're like, I can't do this thing, I don't wanna do it. I don't wanna edit the movie again. Like you're just exhausted, but I realized I couldn't, that was the thing is I couldn't not do it because then you never get another shot. No one will ever be like, hey, I heard you fucked up your first movie. I'd love to give you more cash. No. So the only chance I get is to make this movie as best I can, get it distribution, dance like a monkey at bar mitzvahs until enough people buy it and my investors in the black, then we high five and make another film. But yeah, it was, I guess if I really knew what I was getting into back then, I might have backpedaled, but that's kind of the joy of being stupid. Wait, I think I just insulted myself. Do you think that's stupid, or do you think it's maybe having that intuition that I, I gotta do this, like, to, you know, it was Mark Maron, I watched him on something, and he said, I guess he's like, I'm 47, he's like, this is like my life, this is now. Yeah. Do you think that you have a realization that this is now, and I need to make this happen? Yeah, I have that more now. I'm 45 and I feel, um, there's, a, there's a great poem by a, a Dutch anonymous poet and it says, live, it's in quotation, live, death whispers in my ear, I am coming. And I don't mean that melodramatically, uh, but band all marches to the same you know, fairground. So I feel like I'm enjoying it more now, I don't feel like I'm desperate to try and prove something. I am proving it just by my life and by my actions, uh, but I am very grateful that uh, I threw my hat over the fence to, to have you ever heard the uh, John F. Kennedy story? I haven't. John F. Kennedy, when he was a kid, they used to, uh, he went to high-end, fancy, schmancy schools and they wore uniforms. And um, they would have a hat, a cap on. And they, when they're coming home from school, they would walk by these gorgeous estates. And they'd be thinking, oh, I wonder, what, wonder what's in there over that fence. We should go check that out over there. And they're like, well, we can't. We'll get in trouble. And JFK would take his head and throw it over. He's like, well, now I have to go. So I throw my hat, if that makes sense. Did you have any sleepless nights? <laughs> yeah. A few? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. About two years. Like, yeah, okay. this is, don't blink is my baby. Yeah, and I walked around patting the film canister like this and burping it mm -hmm. and changing his little hard drive. Yeah. When you got stressed out, was your way, again, to go for a walk, turn off the phone, go, and then think it out and get some kind of clarity, or? Uh, there was that, um, when in moments of conflict, It was very important to drink a lot of scotch. No, um, it was important to yes, be calm, breathe deeply, uh, watch other movies, uh, watch other movies, and if 
possible watch the director's commentary and the producer more importantly for me the producer's commentary because it helps you understand put things in perspective um, even great movies have problems you watch a movie uh, there's one of his uh, true romance great movie love that film there's some editing fuck-ups in there hard to find I'm not gonna bring him up but there's some definitely like, whoa 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 that doesn't match it's not a match cut edit his arm was up here in one shot and that was down here in this other shot and you're like but that's okay so it gives you that ability to stop taking every nanosecond so personally and you have to you have to make produce producerial decisions that are for the betterment of the film and for the investor as well as for the audience and can't be masturbatory and then there's issue because you can't just be like it has to be this way or nothing you have to make a product that people want to watch and the investor can get their money back as opposed to never having it end and being overly overwhelmed with this one microcosm right here where you have this whole universe to deal with and trying to get a perspective on it um, yeah it really is a, a life-changing experience I'm sure any, everybody I'm sure that your audience watches and builds movies themselves uh, and I'm sure they know exactly what I'm talking about